my dear taste buddies, welcome to our first lesson. Have you ever tried cooking? And how about processing food in your own way? What are the procedures or method that you do when you process food? Well, today, I will share to you some insights that you need to understand related to food processing. But before we start, I would like you to know our target goals. And these are the following. First, you would be able to define the term food processing and determine the different food processing methods. Second, analyze some of the positive and negative impacts of different processing methods. And lastly, you would be able to create a list of procedures that shows proper processing of food. Processed food is used by many, suggesting that processed food are in some way inferior to their non-processed counterparts. However, it is important to remember that food processing has been used for centuries in order to preserve food or simply to make food edible. And now, what is food processing? Food processing is any method used to turn fresh food into food products. This can involve one or a combination of various processes including washing, chopping, pasteurizing, freezing, fermenting, packaging, cooking, and many more. Food processing also includes adding ingredients, for example, to extend shelf life, or adding vitamins and minerals to improve the nutritional quality of the food. For now, let's go back to the past and let's find out the history of food processing. Are you ready? Food processing dates back to prehistoric ages with crude processing method that included slaughtering, fermenting, sun drying, preserving with salt, and various means of cooking. Salt preservation was especially common for food that constituted the diets of warriors and sailors, up until the introduction of canning methods. Evidence for the existence of this method exists in the writing of the ancient Greek, Chaldean, Egyptian, and Roman civilization, as well as archaeological evidence from Europe, North and South America, and Asia. These tried and tested processing techniques remain essentially the same until the advent of the Industrial Revolution. And now, let's find out the importance of food processing. All raw food materials are processed to improve their palatability, nutritional value, and shelf life. Foods are processed for five major reasons. First, preservation of later consumption or sale to fetch better price. Second, removal of inedible portions. Third, destruction or removal of harmful substances. Fourth, conservation to forms desired by the consumers and subdivision into food ingredients. And now, let's find out some methods of food processing. The first method we have, canning. Canning means the preservation of food in permanent sealed container like metal, glass, plastic, and flexible pouch. Heating is the principal factor to destroy the microorganisms and the permanent sealing to prevent reinfection. The process of canning is sometimes called sterilization because 
The heat treatment of food eliminates all microorganisms that can spoil food and those that are harmful to humans. Way back to the first years of the Napoleonic Wars, the French government headed by Napoleon Bonaparte offered a hefty cash reward of 12,000 francs to any inventors who could develop a safe and reliable food preservation method for his constantly traveling armies. With that, there is only one who took on the challenge, and he is Nicholas Oppert. Nicholas Oppert is a candy maker unveiled his technique for preserving foods by heating glass bottles and sealed with a cork. With that, he is called as the father of canning. About 15 years later, he introduced a method that involved heat processing food in glass jars, reinforced with wire and sealing them with wax. That last technique is similar to the method that some people still use, that sealing jelly jars with paraffin wax. FYI, for your information, that is no longer considered to be safe. The first and true canning method was first introduced by an Englishman, Peter Durand, a method for sealing food in unbreakable tin cans. Peter Durand, a British merchant, received the first patent for the idea of preserving food using tin cans. The patent was granted on August 25, 1810 by King George III of England. And the first commercial canning establishment in the United States was started in 1912 by Thomas Kensett. And now, let's proceed to the second method, and it is fermentation process. Fermentation is one of the oldest forms of food processing known today. Many of mankind's favorite food and beverages are products of fermentation, whether organically or induced, such as beer, wine, bread, sausages, and various sauces, and marinades. When we say fermentation, it is the breakdown of sugars by bacteria, yeast, or other microorganisms under anaerobic conditions. This means no oxygen is needed for the process to take place. Fermentation is not a big use in the production of alcoholic beverages such as wine, beer, and cider. Now, what happened during fermentation process? Well, during fermentation process, these beneficial microbes break down sugars and starches into alcohols and acids, making foods more nutritious and preserving it. So people can store for a long period of time without spoiling. There are three different types of fermentation process. The first one we have lactic acid fermentation. Yeast and bacteria convert starches or sugar into lactic acid, requiring no heat in preparation. Lactic acid bacteria are vital to producing and preserving inexpensive and wholesome foods, which is especially important in feeding. This method makes pickles, kimchi, and sourdough bread. The second one is ethanol or alcohol fermentation. Yeast breaks pyruvate molecules, the output of the metabolism of glucose known as glycolysis, in starches or sugars, down into alcohol and carbon dioxide molecules. Alcoholic fermentation produces wine and beer. And lastly, we have acetic acid fermentation. Starches and sugar from grains and fruits ferment into sour-tasting vinegar and condiments. Example includes apple cider, wine vinegar, and 
kombucha. And now, let's proceed to the third method for processing of food. We have freezing. In this method, food temperatures are reduced to below 0 degrees Celsius to decrease the activity of harmful bacteria. The process can be used to preserve the majority of foods including fruits, vegetables, meat, fish, and ready meals. Then, how does freezing preserve food and keep it safe? Freezing delays spoilage and keeps food safe by preventing microorganisms from growing and by slowing down the enzyme's activity that causes food to spoil. As the water in the food freezes into ice crystals, it becomes unavailable to those microorganisms that need it for growth. And now, let's proceed to the fourth method, and we have pasteurization. Food is heated and then quickly cooled down to kill microorganisms. For example, raw milk may contain harmful bacteria that cause foodborne illnesses. Boiling it or pasteurizing is crucial to ensure it is safe to consume. Apart from dairy products, pasteurization is widely used in preservation of canned foods, juices, and alcoholic beverages. Pasteurization is named in honor of French chemist Louis Pasteur. In 1864, Pasteur developed a technique to heat wine to 50 to 60 degrees Celsius or about 122 to 140 degrees Fahrenheit. The last method we have is smoking. Smoking is a process of heat and chemical treatment of food to help preserve by exposing it to smoke from burning material such as wood, vines, herbs, fruit skins, or spices. This smoke influences the flavor, aroma, texture, appearance, and shelf life of food. The process can be performed at temperature that range generally from 65 degrees Fahrenheit to 250 degree Fahrenheit. Smoking meat and poultry adds an appealing smoke flavor, but it also uses stream mechanism to preserve the meat. First, heat will kill bacteria depending on the time and temperature used. Second, chemical compounds from the smoke have an antimicrobial effect. And finally, the outer surface of meat dries, which reduces moisture available for bacteria to grow. Is there any reasons and consequences of food processing? Well, let's find out. The first reason, it will make food edible. Grain crops, for example, organza sativa, or what we call Asian rice, corn, and wheat are not edible in their natural state. Therefore, it undergo processing techniques such as milling and grinding and turn them into flour. After which, they can made into bread, cereal, pastas, and other edible grain-based products. The second reason we have safety, shelf life, and preservation. Processing improves or even ensures food safety by removing harmful microorganisms. The main methods are pasteurization, airtight packaging, and the use of preservatives. The third one we have the nutritional quality. Food processing can affect the nutritional quality of foods in both ways. It can enhance or for instance, by adding components that were not present. Like vitamin D or by lowering fat, salt or sugar. The fourth one is convenience. Processing and packaging technologies help to answer modern daytime constraints by providing a range of convenient foods. Ready meals, bagged salads, sliced and canned fruits and vegetables. 
that makes a little time to prepare and can be consumed on the go. And lastly, we have the price. Food processing can decrease the cost of foods. For example, frozen vegetables have similar nutritional value as fresh ones, but at a lower price as they have already been prepared and do not contain inedible parts. And also, it can last longer. This way, processing increases the shelf life of food and decreases the amount of waste, reducing thereby the overall cost of food production. For your post-activity, I want you to choose a simple food product that can see at home that contains at least four ingredients research how that product is manufactured then create a flow diagram that very simply shows the steps used to convert those ingredients into your chosen finished product and that's the end of our discussion and i hope you learned something that you may use in your everyday living once again i'm mr jason arani squadra your tle teacher See you on our next lesson. Happy learning!